Okay, have you had a drink this week? How about two? If you're a millennial, that number is probably closer to three or four. Less if you're Gen Z, and you may prefer going no low with a booze-free beverage. Now, Gen Alpha, for you, that's a no-go. If you do decide to booze, that weekend of binge drinking might not have landed you in the hospital, but you know waking up hugging a toilet or scrubbing the Sharpie off your face can have you questioning your life decisions. So you tell yourself, maybe I should take a break from this devil's elixir. Well, you may be surprised to see what happens when you do. What's happening, good people? I'm Alzo Slade, here with Nat Geo to break down how everything you experience and consume can affect your body in ways you may not expect. Right now, what does alcohol do to my body? From Jaquan to Shibuzi, a lot of folks seem to be getting a little tipsy. And we have been for a long, long, long time. There's even evidence of people getting buzzed dating back to 7,000 BCE in China. That's a long time ago. I bet you heard a daily glass of red wine is good for you. Sorry, I hate to dehorn the unicorn. The nonprofit World Heart Federation disagreed, saying there's no link between moderate alcohol consumption and a lower risk of heart disease. And according to the World Health Organization, no amount of alcohol is safe. But what really happens to our bodies when we drink? A couple of sips into your gin and juice, your whiskey and soda, Bloody Mary, whatever your choice, and we're feeling a little nice. As the drinks keep flowing, your liver gets to work, breaking down the alcohol into a toxic chemical. Yep, you heard me right. I said toxic. Now, your body is usually pretty good at kicking the poisonous stuff to the curb, but the more you drink, it can overload your system. To hear a little more, we're gonna turn to National Geographic journalist, Rachel Fairbank. Your liver is responsible for breaking alcohol down. The first step that the liver does is it breaks alcohol down into a molecule called acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde is very toxic. It's also a carcinogen. So our liver filters out all of bad things in our body and gets rid of it for us. But if we're asking too much of it, then our liver is going to struggle and it's also going to get damaged. If there's a lot of alcohol in your body, it can only break it down so fast, it'll be in your body for longer. Thank you, Rachel. So, alcohol. We gotta understand what heavy drinking does in the first place. To start, it takes a nasty toll on your liver and heart. You're at the risk of high blood pressure, heart failure, and stroke. Your skin suffers. Dehydration makes it look dull and wrinkled, and inflammation increases redness. You could be drinking at 35 looking like you're 65. A night of drinking can disrupt your beauty rest. Now you're irritable for the next day, two days, all because you've been drinking. Over a long time, that heavy drinking can really do a number. Your risk of cancer goes up. Same with the chance of early death. And who wants that? Nobody. What's more, the older we get, the more sensitive we become to alcohol. The water levels in our bodies drop after the age of 61, which affects how quickly we get intoxicated. And the 2024 study at Stanford shows your body may begin changing as early as your 40s. So if you saw Animal House or a house party in the theaters, it's probably a good idea to lay off the keg stands. But really, if you're doing keg stands in your 40s, you got more problems than alcohol, my friend. All right, you made a serious decision. You're gonna press pause on the drink. Now, where do you begin? An easy way to start is with a dry month. Look to the Brits, who popularized the struggle by bravely putting down their pints. An incredible one out of every seven adults in the UK tried a dry January in 2023. You wanna give it a go? I'm not gonna lie, it may not be easy at first, but I promise it gets better. Now. Picture this, it's January 1st. You went out with a bang, ringing in the new year. Now it's time to detox. As your body recovers from essentially being poisoned, you may feel nauseous, fatigued, or irritable. A night of heavy drinking can also cause full-blown anxiety. This phenomenon even has its own hashtag, anxiety. So when do we start feeling the benefits? To find out more, 
We're going to turn back to our buddy, Rachel. When people give up alcohol for a month, by the end of that month, what they're finding is that their blood pressure is better. They've got improved insulin resistance. And we tend to lose a little bit of weight when we give up alcohol. The amazing thing about the liver is that if you give it a chance, it will start to heal itself. Giving up alcohol for a month is just a really good opportunity to reevaluate your relationship with alcohol. Congratulations, you survived the month. You're feeling good. Now what? Hopefully, the break helped you understand why you used to drink. You may start to wonder, is this something worth sticking to in the long run? You've decided to retire from your days of binge drinking. Or maybe you're ready to turn that dry month into a dry year. Luckily, you can reverse some of the bad things caused by excess drinking. Building on the changes you'll see after 30 days, a longer period of sobriety takes it up another notch. Your liver will thank you because it can regenerate tissue. Your energy and immunity increase, and your skin can even rehydrate at impressive rates. Now you look 35 again. But to see the effects, you don't need to go cold turkey for good. There's still a lot of benefits to just reducing the amount you drink. You know, something gaining in popularity is called mindful drinking. Mindful drinking? They've got names for all this stuff. You could plan certain days of the week to drink, take along a like-minded friend who's also looking to cut back on the alcohol. Or you can even ask for half-strength cocktails. If you do decide to fully quit booze, don't worry, you are not by yourself. 38% in the U.S. abstain. Actually, each year, more young adults are choosing to forego alcohol altogether for many reasons. They could low-key dislike it, want to avoid bad experiences, or they just want to save some money. Surprisingly, these habits are affecting the hospitality market. Sober tourism is on the rise. This is where travelers are opting out of the winery tours and pub crawls, focusing instead on more active, high-energy activities without the drinks. Hotels and restaurants seem to be catching on by offering more creative mocktail menus and other zero-proof choices. By 2022, the market for booze alternatives was worth $10 billion. Times are changing, and so is our understanding of what alcohol does to our bodies. One thing is for sure, your body decidedly likes you better when you stay off the spirits. That short break from booze may help you break habits and make mindful, healthier choices in the long term. If you do decide to sip something, please be careful. Let me know how you handle your spirits. Dry month, occasional sip, abstinence. But if you do mocktails, send us your recipe. It's time for me to go. Catch y'all next time.